Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna take a look at some orchids which are rather sickly. I wanna document their progress and show you how they're doing. So we're gonna talk about stuff like Sanhopias, the Repot Me Phalaenopsis orchids, and a few others. So with that said, let's just start actually with the Stanhopia seedling. All right, so as always, you will have initial videos on all of these orchids down below in the description. Just so you see how we started with, this is a Stanhopia seedling. I know it does not look like one. It doesn't even have a pseudobulb, if you know how Stanhopias look like. It is actually a seedling. It's the Ocolata. I got it, I don't even remember when, a few months ago from um, Orchid Garden. I think it was for my birthday. And I had the unpleasant surprise of it actually being smaller than I thought. I thought I would get a tiny pseudobulb at least, but no. I feel like this is something that has just been deflessed like a few months ago. So that's what I received. She was not the strongest orchid, not in perfect condition, and roots were almost completely missing. Now she's potted in a experimental type of pot. This is the Oxycore or Oxygen pot from Repot Me. Again, I'll link you to the video down below. The reason why I potted it in this pot is because Stanhopias actually produce flower spikes from the bottom of the pot if they're potted or basket. Now I am in no danger with this one, I think she will bloom in a few years at this point, but I did want to put the idea out there. I do believe these types of pots are suited for orchids which produce flower spikes from the base because you can actually keep them as pots if you so desire, you don't necessarily need to hang them and you can easily take a peek and see when the orchid blooms. When it blooms, obviously you can hang it for um, a few weeks and then put it back in this setup. So I was counting that this experiment would happen with a little bit more mature Stanhopia, but since it didn't, hey, eh, what to do? So ever since then, the Stanhopia has actually done pretty okay. So let me get you in closer. We do have quite a few roots starting and I'm pretty sure you cannot see much but there are roots there we have them so roots have indeed started to grow not enough that i can see them through the net pot just yet the orchid has started to grow another leaf right here but still no suitable just yet i'm hoping for a new growth this year i'm not sure if this one will transform in a pseudobulb this is just the initial shoot from the seed. And I'm also thinking it's receiving a little bit too much light here under my LED shelf, which is actually pretty powerful. So some orchids become a little bit red due to the anthocyanin um, pigment. So I'm thinking that I will move her in a shadier location, maybe together with the Phalaenopsis, because I am pretty sure that in the flask she did not receive this amount of light. But there we have it, she's actually doing Okay, she's pulling through. I think it will be a nice orchid to continue watching, see her evolution. Um, even though I did not deflask it, I really, really don't see how this orchid is not a flask type of seedling. It does not even have a pseudobulb. Unless it is seriously mislabeled and this is something like a disau or monopodial or something. Other than that, you know, I don't know how she has no pseudobulb whatsoever. But anyway, I'm glad she's still okay. Things are moving very slow. I am actually gonna put her together with the Phalaenopsis, which receive a little less light than what the panels are providing. So of course I'll keep you up to date. So far so good though. Here we have an orchid which was purchased, I do believe together with the Stanhopia. This is a Tuberolabium um, cotoensi. And oh boy, some orchids in that order were really not okay, including this guy. This was a mounted orchid and it just lost its roots, maybe on transport, maybe in the nursery, I don't know. So first of all, I potted it in a mixture of bark because I thought it would not really like full moss, but then the roots died. So I had to do something because the orchid was seriously, seriously dehydrating and I couldn't really water it once a day and always keep the medium on top moist 24 seven. That is borderline impossible with bark. If you want to keep everything wet, you cannot, you need to use moss. So that's what I did. I pot this orchid in pure sphagnum moss. This is just a transitional type of medium. She will not stay here. I think she's almost ready to be repotted in a more suitable mix for her. But there you have it. Now, I don't actually have a video in which she looks very, very dehydrated, but she was. You can see, I think from the older leaves, 
I still have some wrinkles, which due to the age of the leaf, maybe they will never correct themselves, but the leaf is super, super sturdy right now. She's not flimsy anymore. And the newer leaves, they look very good. I'm also having a new leaf growing here and of course, quite a few roots. So this orchid is gonna do okay as well. Hopefully this year, maybe I'm gonna have a flower spike. This is actually a miniature orchid. She's supposed to be tiny. So it's not like she's a seedling. I just took a closer look, but no, <laughs> no flower spikes. Um, so yeah, I think I will let these roots grow just a little bit more, make sure that they will start to absorb water and they're long enough. And then I will repot it, not in full sphagnum moss, but there we have it. It was actually pretty willing to start rooting. So I don't think this is a very finicky orchid, even if it loses roots. It's a new species for me. I'm happy to discover it with you guys. But if you were interested in tuberial labiums, there we have it. For me, it was actually very willing to produce roots as long as I provided constant moisture. This medium never actually went dry, completely dry. And you can see it by the amount of algae. It wasn't soggy, it was just damp, and that kept the roots growing. Dryness wasn't very okay for this orchid in the state it was in. And to continue with orchid garden, sadly, uh, recently I made another order for my seller review series, which you'll find down below. And I ordered myself an orchid, which I always wanted to have. It's a Comparedia. I hope it's the orange variety, but I'm not entirely sure. It is again a young orchid, it came mounted but it was squished in transport. And if you watch the video with me unpacking it, you'll see what I mean. So it arrived dehydrated, squished, not in good shape. And to this day, it does not look particularly good. And this leaf, I think I will lose it because it's not getting hydrated. And if it doesn't do something soon, I think I'm gonna lose the leaf. But there is hope and I hope the leaf will be saved by this little root forming here. Oh, I have another one there in the back. This is such a tiny orchid, I actually see more detail on my camera than I see in real life. Oh, I just discovered something. There we go. That there is a new growth. Oh, I'm so happy. I think this orchid will be okay as well. I did not notice that new growth, but on the viewfinder I see it. It's like a magnifying glass. So what to do? Not the greatest first impression with this orchid species, but yet again, the fact that it's willing to put out uh, roots and a new growth maybe means that it's not a super finicky orchid. We have seen worse. We know Miltoniopsis, we know Mastavalias, right? Which under certain conditions, you know, they can be vigorous as well, but under the same conditions in my growth space, I do believe these are a little bit more willing to pull through. A bit of a shame that I do have quite a few years ahead of me, probably with this orchid as well, even though she is not a seedling, a flask seedling, I don't believe she is. The setback will be pretty major on the orchid, particularly if I lose this leaf, which is so incredibly soft. I think you can even see the texture. It's not supposed to look that way, but look how soft it is. So I'm hoping the root will start to absorb water soon so it gets hydrated, but I'm hopeful for the new growth. Next up, some good news and some bad news with the Repot Me Phalaenopsis orchids. These I purchased for the first video we made with repotting orchids. Links down below so you see them. When I chose them, this one, I felt very, very, very sorry for it because it was really suffering. If you watch the video, you'll see what I mean. So I purchased it knowing that it's not in good condition, but thinking, you know what? It's a good example to actually show people what can happen if you treat orchids inadequately and how orchids you just purchased can look like. So this was the one that I thought, oh, she is in very poor condition. Then the second one, the big lip one, I thought, well, okay, we have a few dying roots in the medium, but it's not all that bad. Again, it's a good example to show dying roots and what to do with them. And the third one, the purple one, was the healthiest of the lot. I thought, you know what, let's just get a healthy one to deal with that one as well. So in all of this equation, we lost one of them. Two of them are doing okay, uh, but they're not the ones I suspected. So first of all, the mini phalaenopsis, she is doing fine. And if you look at the video, you would see how the roots look like, pretty much dead. You can see signs of dehydration here. She's just starting to get hydrated. And yes, I have so many wrinkles, but I cannot bend this leaf, which means she's getting hydration. Also, I have a new leaf here. And best of all, I do have a tiny root starting here. Do you see the tip? I think I do have a few roots in the medium as well because this orchid is getting hydrated. 
there we have it she's doing great this is the one that we potted in the moss type of mixture and for my climate for this size of a pot it's really really great so with this one we're pulling through happy to see her do so well next up the purple one this was the one that looked the greatest and the roots are pretty okay on this orchid she didn't get dehydrated or anything leaves are sturdy but you can see that the flower spikes are cut and that's because I discovered a massive mealybug infestation on this one. You can also see a mealybug remain here in the center, which is dead, don't worry about it. I treated this orchid, uh, but yeah, she had mealybugs. However, it wasn't all that affected. Most of them were sitting on the flower spikes. So they left the base alone. Mealybugs have a bad tendency sometimes to go inside the medium and start to attack the axis of the orchid at the base. When I repotted it, I didn't notice anything, but this orchid is quarantined. It's sitting on the other side of the greenhouse. And the third one, the big lip one, well, that's the sad news. I took some pictures. It was full of mealybugs, but not on the flowers at the core, at the base. That's why it was actually losing leaves. The mealybugs formed some sort of cocoons. I think those were the eggs or something or the young ones. It was so full, it was scary. So I decided to just trash it. The stem was looking pretty, pretty affected. Roots were lost. The core here, it was affected. It was full as well with that very cottony stuff. And yeah, I decided, no, I'm not gonna take any risks. So yeah, we lost that one. It wasn't necessarily stem rot. It wasn't stress. It was a combination of everything caused by the mealybugs. Who would have thought? I've never ever encountered such an infested orchid. This one, I think she's okay. I treated it, but I am still keeping her, oops. No, there's <laughs> nothing. I'm still keeping her under observation. I did notice that a lot of orchids this year actually have mealybugs and my own sidiums have mealybugs as well. A few, I noticed them. Let me see if I can find one to film now. Okay, found one. Do you see it? Right there. This guy, puffy guy. Actually did a good job in removing most of them from the flowers. It is just so, so hard to remove them with my oily solution because I will destroy the flowers. So what I do now is I keep these orchids on the other side. I manually remove as many mealybugs as I can see and I am considering just cutting the flower spikes because I see them only on the flowers and on the flower spikes and I don't want them to move on the plant. They typically sit on the spikes, but not only. So. Yeah, Sally, most of New Yorkers that I got this year had mealybugs, like never before. I found more here on this spent flower. Do you see this puffiness? That Phalaenopsis was covered in stuff like this. The stem, I mean, it was affected. It looked slightly browny and covered in this white stuff. Next up, some Cattleya seedlings. Not the ones that I had uh, for two years already, which have grown quite a lot. You can see them in the back here. These are some new ones. Um, this is a Cattleya Percivaliana variety on Dane or on Dine. This one was not looking okay. She wasn't doing okay in semi-hydro and Leca as it is. I discovered that seedlings act a little bit like oncidiums. Even though they're Cattleyas and Cattleyas can handle drought and airiness and all of those things. Seedlings, not so much. So I did a little experiment and I'm trying out Leca with um, sphagnum moss for them, at least as a transitional medium until they get larger and more established and it works. They're actually picking up growth. This is a uh, newer one transferred, but this is an older one. Look at this one. And she was really, really struggling, but look at her now. She really enjoys this type of medium. So again, I see people doing semi-hydro or just uh, self-watering whatever with Cattleya seedlings without any type of issues. And for me, it's just not working out. All of these orchids, which require a little bit more moisture, they're just not flourishing in the amount of airness that the um, semi-hydro, let's say, setup provides. So I think it's a good solution with the whole moss situation. Moss can be removed really, really easy from the roots as long as it's not compacted. And as you can see, it's not compacted. Like that doesn't need to be removed from the roots, so it's okay, um, but yeah. I am much more happy with this combination for the seedlings. The mature ones, they don't need it. I find that they're doing okay. There are other issues that I need to tend to, such as the constant pH adjustment for Leca. But you know, I'm, I'm putting up with that <laughs> for the moment at least. But with seedlings, no. This climate is just not okay for only Leca, which is a shame, but what to do? 
I think this is a good compromise for now and I do like how these orchids have reacted. And lastly, let's take a look at one of my variegated orchids. It's one I really, really like. This is a um, Bretonia Shellub Okika, which is exactly the same as Tolkien, but it is variegated, so the variety name is Okika. I got this one last year from one of you guys, and it's so, so very dear to me. But if you remember, and I'll try to find the video, it was so shriveled and dehydrated. Um, it didn't have a lot of roots, they didn't fare so well on transport, but now look at it it's so majestic and if you were ever wondering if pseudobulbs plump back up after they've been shriveled yes they do as you can see we can still see remains of shriveling yes but the bulb is completely hydrated right now it's plump everything is okay most of the pseudobulbs will plump back up i did discover that the oldest let's say seedling pseudobulbs sometimes they don't plump back up i'll show you an example after this but definitely if they're newer pseudobulbs they will plump back up so no need to remove them even if they're very very shriveled they will not create roots so what will produce the new root system is the new growth which will come afterwards this one Oh, she is making some roots. I don't want to disturb it. This one will need repotting <laughs> because look at it. She's already growing almost outside of the pot. This is one of those very, very large types of orchids, but it doesn't necessarily have oncidium or odontoglossum or anything of the sorts to actually require a lot of moisture. We have Brassia, which is a very similar type of orchid to the Cattleya when it comes to medium and Miltonia, which is forgiving. It's not the Miltoniopsis. So these types of orchids are not actually finicky and they can withstand some degree of drying out of aeration, just like a Cattleya, as you can see. This is actually self-watering and Leca. So with this one, I find that in my climate, it's not necessary to use the Sphagnomoss combination that I use, I started to use with the Oncidiums. Um, and I still have very, very good results. I feel like the blooming with this one this year will be majestic. I just need to unpot it ASAP before new roots actually start to um, attach to the sides of the pot. It is the perfect time to repot because this one, can you imagine? The pseudobulb will be bigger than this one, I suspect, and it will just not have space. It will start to lean over and the roots might start to just grow outside. This growth is an even worse uh, spot right here. So yeah, I need to do something about it, but it is pulling through, it's gorgeous. Thank you so much for sending it to me. I love it and I cannot wait to see it in bloom. So I was telling you that most pseudobulbs will plump back up, but the oldest ones will not. So in my case here, do you see how plump the pseudobulb became? Well, this one is created before this one, it's even older. And yeah, this guy is not plumping back up. You can let it be, but I discover that as time passes, it will not get any better. It will just look bad and at some point it will actually yellow and be discarded on its own. If I were to repot this orchid right now, I would completely remove this pseudobulb. For now, I'm gonna let it be, but yeah, it can actually happen. And since we're here, let's make an update on this one as well. I got this one through Ana Maria from a Romanian flower shop and it's an odontoglossum hybrid. It's a red, beautiful variety, which hated Zemihydro and Leca. There we have it. So I potted it in a self-watering pot uh, with a top layer, and behold, we are already looking a lot better. We have wounds of the past here, yes, but we also have new growth, which looks spectacular here. And this new growth here, which again, looks really, really great in comparison. So I'm happy to actually have this one doing okay. And maybe this growth here, which is maturing, it's not completely mature yet, maybe it will bloom this year. It would be so great if it blooms because this orchid has amazing, amazing flowers. It seems to be okay in the summertime for me, even though it's more of a cool grower, but the switch in medium was absolutely necessary for this one and I'm glad I did it. I think she will look better and better from now on. Alrighty, so that's about it for today. I think tomorrow we're gonna make a care tutorial for the Renantheras. Yes, I think we're ready. I think they look majestic now. They also have some blooms open, so it's the perfect time to do that. So stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I hope you've enjoyed today's update. And you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos five times a week. And if you really enjoy my channel and would like to help it grow, consider checking out the merch store down below. Soon enough, I'm gonna work on the collectibles. So yeah, lots of plans for the springtime. But with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.